With the Canada Food Guide coming out several days ago, most people are in an uproar and a small portion of plant-based dieters are incredibly happy saying this is a step in the right direction, also claiming that this is the first time the Food Guide has been created without any sort of industry bias. And for those of you who haven't seen it, half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables, one quarter should be from whole grains, the remaining quarter being protein, apparently from mostly plant-based sources, and then you should be replacing sugary drinks with water. Vegans love mentioning the meat, dairy, and egg lobbies influencing dietary guidelines, studies, whatever it may be, but they fail to mention the biggest lobby of them all, the grain lobby. And it is very clear throughout past dietary guidelines that grains have been the predominant recommendation regardless. And upon further inspection, Canada actually produces over 50% of the world's supply of lentils, and they also grow a large amount of various grains, legumes, that I am assuming they are looking to push and make a profit for in this new dietary guideline. Plus, I'm sure they're writing a hefty check to Monsanto for all the herbicides, pesticides, and glyphosate that they're spraying on these crops. One other thing to mention is Canada's climate year-round. How do they exactly expect to fill up half of everyone's plate with fruits and vegetables. They're just gonna ship them in from other parts of the world. How is that better for the environment than buying local animal foods, especially in the dead of winter? In regards to the basis of this, it falls so in line with conventional wisdom. Oh, eat your fruits and vegetables. Whole grains are good for you. Protein from plants is healthy because meat, fat, and all that stuff is bad. Reality is that fruits and vegetables do not contain any significant source of nutrition, particularly fat-soluble vitamins in their most available forms. Whole grains have no significant nutrient value in general. Whole grains don't have vitamins, and the forms of minerals that are in grains tend to be bound to anti-nutrients such as phytic acid and oxalic acid. They are not really a source of anything besides caloric energy. That is the reason we had grains present in our diet for the past several thousand years. And in regards to recommending whole grains as a healthy option versus refined grains, the only real difference here is the insulin release if the food is consumed on its own. There is arguably no nutritional benefit to consuming the whole grain as opposed to the refined grain, i.e. brown rice versus white rice. And if people do follow these dietary recommendations, especially in regards to the high legume and high grain consumption, they are going to ruin their stomachs even further because of the high anti-nutrient content of these pulses, legumes, and grains, specifically when they're not prepared properly. And we know that people aren't going to be soaking beans in salted water for three days, changing the water six times. What's really crazy is if we take a look at Canada's old food guide, and the nutrient density was actually on a level that I would recommend to people. They even have recommendations weekly for organ meats. The daily recommendation was a minimum of one pint of milk with some cheese, a serving of animal protein every day, organ meats once a week, and three or four eggs weekly. They even recommended fish liver oils as essentials for children. This is insane. This is like a perfect diet that I would recommend to people and that people would be super healthy on, and we are going in the opposite direction. They were actually truthful and onto what is actually a healthy diet back then. But you have evidence, you have vegans looking at the old food guide and you have them saying the new one is better, which is complete insanity. Let's take a look at the original USDA food pyramid. If you can't realize that the foods they recommend are based solely off of profit margin and what they can produce most efficiently, you might actually have the IQ level of the grape that you are feeding to your smelly vegan girlfriend or boyfriend while stroking their hair. This vegan diet is not better for the environment, it is lacking key nutrients, and some land is specific to pasture. Animals are required for certain ecosystems. The whole thing that's unfortunate is conventional wisdom and how much people believe in the health properties of certain plant foods, when it's actually quite the opposite when you consider every single one of our ancestors, various indigenous groups, obtained fat-soluble vitamins only from high-quality animal foods. But this is something that, whether it's discovered 10, 15, 20, 100 years from now, someone will look back on my videos and say, hey, Frankie boy was right. 
One interesting fact to throw in here is that we already consume 70% of our calories from plant foods in America and meat has been on the decline for years. I did a video explaining blue zones several months ago showing that blue zones actually consume similar macronutrient ratios to American diets. They just consume a much higher food quality and they don't consume as much sugar as well as refined vegetable oils, things like that. The idea that meat is continuing to have a negative effect on our health doesn't make sense if we actually look at per capita red meat consumption statistics. It has actually gone down drastically over the past few years, heavily in favor of poultry. But you know what hasn't gone down? Autism, child cancer rates, and miscarriage rates. These negative things happening are correlated directly to the creation of dietary guidelines resulting in the decrease in nutrient-dense animal foods in our diet. Every single indigenous group of humans, our ancestors, hunter-gatherers, prized animal foods for maintaining optimal health and development through all stages of life. It's very clear that the further we step away from our past diets, the more animal foods that we remove from our diet, the worse disease rates you're going to get. And if you Google things like, why is autism rising? Why are miscarriages getting worse? Why is pregnancy mortality getting worse? Why are various child cancer rates rising? Why are certain diseases getting worse? The answer on the CDC website or whatever website it is, oh, we cannot explain why diseases are getting worse. It's to me, complete insanity. What do you have to do to wake people up? You could literally kill their child in front of them in a hospital and they will not realize there's something wrong with our society today. I don't want to touch on this too much. It's a very sensitive topic, but definitely look at the statistics since the USDA guidelines have been enacted in the 1980s. That is when these things actually start getting progressively worse. You would think with the medical system, how things are getting better in hospitals, that we would have prevented this to some degree, but no. Not true. As much as dietitians don't want to believe, people have been adhering to dietary guidelines over the past few dozen years. They've reduced their fat consumption, they're eating less red meat, they're eating more whole grains, fruits and vegetables, yet their health is getting worse. And the answer is always, oh, you weren't doing the diet right, you need to cut your fat consumption more, you need to eat more whole grains, more fruits and vegetables. Where else do we see this? We see this in vegan diets. People go on a vegan diet, they feel better initially because they removed all these inflammatory foods and then their health slowly starts to decline because of lack of nutrition and high anti-nutrient content in the diet. And it's never, oh, maybe we do need to incorporate animal foods in the diet. Maybe we need higher quality foods. It's always, oh, you didn't do the vegan diet right. You need to do it this way. You need to do it that way. It doesn't matter if the person was on their deathbed if they tried all 700 versions of the vegan diet. The answer is that they never did the diet right, and we will see the same thing for the USDA dietary guidelines to the same degree. They can always say, oh, well, you didn't follow it well enough. There are people that have died of heart attacks that have consumed incredibly healthy diets by these standards. High whole grain consumption, fruit and vegetable consumption, blah, blah, blah. They still drop out of a heart attack, and they're like, oh, well, I guess it's genetic. This answer that you're not doing the diet properly there is no diet so complex that going from 5% of your calories is fat to 2% of your calories is fat is going to make any sort of significant difference. What that means is that the diet itself is inherently not good. If you're on a vegan diet and you can't consume wheat, you can't consume this grain, you can't consume that grain, you have to soak this grain for 20 minutes, you have to soak that grain for 3 hours and 7 minutes and 42 seconds, you have to change the water 61 times and put this type of salt from this lake in the world, and then it's it gets crazy. If you need to do these things for a diet, it is not the diet meant for you. And And to me, this whole thing is just crazy in general because... These foods literally did not exist in indigenous groups, and it's foods that we've never eaten before in any part of human history. Uh, enough of that rant. Overall, as I've illustrated in quite a few of my videos, I'm in the kind of destructive mindset that some people are so brainwashed into a plant-based way of living, and these preconceived notions that we have about certain foods are so hard to convince people out of, things like fat and cholesterol being bad for you, that I'd rather let people be to their own devices, and figure this out on their own. And 
hey, some people have to suffer to the point that they're almost dead. And some people even die before they realize that their lifestyle or dietary choices are killing them. And if people do follow these dietary recommendations, when they go sterile, when they're infertile, when their children are autistic, it's going to get to a point where it's so severe that you would think, how can people not realize it's the diet? What are they going to say? That every single person that needs to wear glasses and has crooked teeth, it's because genetics have changed our lives? Is that really what people are going to believe? I'm sure they will. It's crazy how brainwashed people can get and how the explanation of, oh, it's genetics is used as a blanket term for everything. To me, it's crazy. You could literally have like the medical industry and throw a blanket over it and write genetics on it and people will walk right by it. For anyone that thinks this is not profit driven, you really need to understand the margins on grain products and that the amount of money that they put into growing and harvesting these products versus the profit they make is exponentially more than any animal food. If you think that the meat, the dairy, the egg industries have ever been lucrative enough to really push their products, you're insane. You have to put in so much money to raise animals that even though you're selling that steak for $8 a pound, you might have had to put $2 into it to sell it. With grains, you're putting in a fraction. You might spend several pennies and make dollars on the product. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. If you guys wanna check out my Amazon shop from products I use in my day-to-day -day life to my Patreon, uh, you guys can also reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to increasing the nutrient density of your diet, uh, frankatofano at gmail.com or through the contact form on my website, frank-tofano.com.